Imagine a ship, heavy with treasures, setting sail for Rome 2,000 years ago, only to vanish beneath stormy waters near Greece. For centuries, the wreck lay hidden, forgotten by history, until a chance discovery revealed something extraordinary. A lump of corroded bronze hiding gears and inscriptions no one could explain. 2,000 years ago, there was a shipwreck, and in the boat that sank was a device. What they uncovered wasn't just another artifact, covered in sediment because they've been sitting at the bottom of the ocean for 2,000 years. It was a machine so sophisticated, it would challenge everything we thought we knew about ancient technology. Today, we dive deep into the mystery of the Antikythera mechanism. This was a spectacular device. It's an analog computer. The world's first known computer, thousands of years ahead of its time. How did it work? This was a device that we wouldn't see again for another 2,000 years. The sinking and discovery. It all began with a disaster. Around 60 BCE, a massive merchant ship loaded with Greek treasures set sail toward Rome. Statues, jewelry, precious cargo, 300 tons of it, filled the vessel from bow to stern. But somewhere near the island of Antikythera, disaster struck. A fierce storm battered the ship. With so much weight, it didn't stand a chance. It sank, vanishing into the depths of the Aegean Sea. Time moved on, history forgot. Fast forward nearly 2,000 years to 1900. Sponge divers from the island of Simi were searching for sea sponges. They decided to go back out and dive for sponges one more time. When one diver stumbled upon something strange, instead of sponges, he found ancient bronze statues littering the seafloor, their forms eerily preserved under layers of sand and coral. The team can't believe what they found. Statues, pottery, marble fragments, an entire world frozen in time. It would become the largest collection of Greek artifacts ever discovered in one place. The Greek government organized an expedition to recover the treasures. During the years 1900 to 1902, a major expedition was mounted from Greece to pull up everything they could find. Piece by piece, the wreckage was hauled to the surface and taken to Athens. At the National Archaeological Museum, experts marveled at the stunning statues and artwork, meticulously restoring them for public display. But among the crates of splendor sat a strange corroded lump of bronze and wood, ignored, overlooked, dismissed as little more than a rock fused with metal. Months passed. As the object dried out in the museum air, cracks formed along its surface. Slowly, what looked like simple corrosion began to split open, revealing an intricate secret hidden inside. Tiny gear wheels, delicate inscriptions, and evidence of a machine far more advanced than anything known from that era. But the gear wheels were not known from the classical world. At first, no one could believe it. Gears in ancient Greece? Mechanical technology that wouldn't appear again until the medieval clockmakers over a thousand years later? This humble lump was about to rewrite the story of ancient technology and kick off one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Early Research and Misunderstandings The first person to truly look closer at the corroded bronze was Greek archaeologist Valerios Stais. As he studied the broken fragments, he noticed something incredible. Visible teeth on what looked like ancient gears. To Stais, it was obvious this wasn't just art or decoration, it was a machine. But the idea was almost too strange to accept. After all, no mechanical devices with moving gears were known from ancient times. Mechanical clocks wouldn't be invented until the Renaissance, nearly 1,400 years later. What was this doing on a ship that sank in 60 BCE? The initial mystery attracted the attention of other scholars. Historians John Sforanos and Adolf Wilhelm were brought in to study the curious inscriptions found across the bronze plates. Painstakingly, they deciphered the faded Greek letters, revealing clues hidden for centuries. They uncovered references to zodiac constellations, ancient months, and detailed operational instructions. Meanwhile, another researcher, Pericles Radiatus, focused on an unusual term engraved on the mechanism, an ancient word referring to the zodiac scale, the circle of constellations that the Greeks believed the stars and planets moved through. This hinted at something far greater than a simple tool. One theory began to take shape. Perhaps this device was an astrolabe, an ancient instrument used to measure the position of celestial bodies. 
it was not recognized at all as being anything interesting when it was discovered. It was just a corroded lump about the size of a large dictionary. Yet traditional astrolabes didn't require complex gears. Why then did this machine seem so intricate? Could it somehow simulate the movements of the stars mechanically? Each new discovery made the device even more puzzling. The inscriptions, the gears, the fine craftsmanship, it all pointed toward a level of technological sophistication that simply shouldn't have existed at the time. Despite the growing excitement, the Antikythera mechanism remained an unsolved riddle. No one knew exactly what it did, how it worked, or who had built it. And just as the mystery started to capture imaginations, fate intervened once again. Political upheaval, wars, and economic crises were about to put the world's first computer back into the shadows, this time for decades. Forgotten again, war and neglect. Just as scholars were beginning to grasp the importance of the Antikythera mechanism, the world shifted. The early 20th century was a time of turbulence, political unrest, two devastating world wars, and economic hardships that pulled attention elsewhere. Research funding dried up, museum projects were abandoned. The precious fragments of the mechanism, once so full of promise, were packed away into storage crates at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. Dust gathered, curators changed, decades passed. For a time, it seemed the Antikythera mechanism would be forgotten once again, left to decay in the quiet darkness of a storeroom, just as it had once slept beneath the waves. It would take a new generation, new technology, and a renewed sense of wonder to finally unlock its secrets and change history forever. Modern Rediscovery and Breakthroughs In the 1950s, the mystery of the Antikythera mechanism was pulled back into the light. A new generation of adventurers was taking to the seas, and among them was none other than Jacques Cousteau, the legendary diver and filmmaker who helped pioneer modern underwater exploration. In 1953, Cousteau and his team explored the Antikythera wreck once more. Armed with better diving equipment and cameras, they hoped to uncover more of the ship's secrets. They found additional artifacts buried under thick layers of sand, amphorae, pottery, parts of the ship itself, but no new pieces of the strange mechanism. Even so, their exploration reignited public interest in the wreck and its hidden treasures. Meanwhile, on land, science was making incredible strides. Historian and physicist Derek de Sola Price from the United Kingdom became fascinated with the fragments. Using the then-revolutionary technology of X-ray imaging, Price peered inside the corroded lumps without damaging them. What he found amazed him. More tiny gears, hidden mechanisms, and intricate craftsmanship. In 1974, Price proposed the first full model of the Antikythera mechanism, calling it a calendar computer. According to his theory, it was capable of predicting astronomical positions and eclipses. It was a groundbreaking idea, but there was a catch. To make his model work, Price had to alter some details, like the number of teeth on certain gears, making his version less accurate than he had hoped. Enter Michael Wright and Alan Bromley, two researchers who believed there was more to the story. Wright, a curator at the Science Museum in London, and Bromley, a physicist from Sydney, decided to take a closer look. They applied a new imaging technique called linear tomography, which allowed them to take hundreds of thin cross-sectional images of the fragments and digitally reconstruct their interiors in astonishing detail. Their findings revealed something Derek Price had missed. The mechanism was even more complex than anyone had imagined. Hidden gears and intricate systems suggested that the Antikythera device was not just a calendar. It was a full-blown mechanical model of the heavens. But even their partnership didn't survive the pressure. Bromley broke ties with Wright, taking crucial data with him. On his deathbed, Bromley admitted he had hoped to solve the mechanism's mystery alone. Fortunately, Wright pressed on. His work, combined with that of Tony Freeth and the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project in the early 2000s, finally brought the device's true purpose into focus. Armed with state-of-the-art 3D scanning and imaging technology, they would soon reveal what the ancient Greeks had truly built, a cosmic machine beyond their time. How the Mechanism Works At first glance, the Antikythera mechanism might look like nothing more than a jumble of broken gears and corroded bronze. But when fully reconstructed, it reveals something truly extraordinary, a mechanical model of the cosmos, 
hidden inside a wooden box about the size of a shoebox. The device worked using a complex series of interlocking bronze gears, at least 30, and possibly more, that were precisely engineered to interact with each other. Turn a small hand crank on the side, and the entire system would spring to life. Each rotation advanced the internal gears, which in turn moved a series of dials and pointers across the front and back faces of the mechanism. The front displayed a zodiac dial showing the positions of the Sun, the Moon, and the five known planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. It also had a calendar ring based on the Egyptian calendar of 365 days, divided into months and marked with Greek inscriptions. One of the most impressive features was the moon phase indicator. It's the first shock because anything from ancient Greece simply shouldn't have gear wheels. These were precision gears. Using a cleverly designed differential gear, the kind that wouldn't be seen again until medieval clockmaking, the mechanism could accurately display the moon's phases as it waxed and waned throughout the month. On the back of the device, two spiral dials told a deeper story. The top dial tracked the 19-year metonic cycle a period after which the phases of the moon repeat on the same days of the year. Inside this spiral, a smaller four-year dial recorded the cycle of the Olympic Games. Because yes, even in ancient Greece, knowing when to prepare for the Olympics was crucial. Below, another spiral dial predicted eclipses. It worked by mapping the Saros cycle, a roughly 18-year period after which solar and lunar eclipses repeat. With this tool, ancient astronomers could predict when the sun would darken, or when the moon would vanish from the night sky. Incredibly, all of this was built around a geocentric model of the universe, the Earth firmly at the center, with celestial bodies revolving around it. Though we now know the heliocentric model to be correct, the Antikythera mechanism flawlessly recreated what ancient astronomers observed in the sky. In short, the Antikythera mechanism wasn't just a clock or a calendar. It was a mechanical universe, a miniature cosmos that could simulate celestial events with remarkable precision, all controlled by the turn of a single crank. Purpose, tool, toy, or something more. As researchers pieced together the workings of the Antikythera mechanism, a new question emerged. What was it actually used for? At first glance, it seems obvious. An astronomical calculator for predicting celestial events. It could tell you the phase of the moon, the position of the planets, upcoming eclipses, and even when the next Olympic Games would take place. In theory, it would have been an incredible tool for astronomers, scholars, and sailors. But there's another possibility. The craftsmanship was so intricate, the gearing so delicate, that it's likely only a few individuals could afford such a marvel. Some historians believe it was never meant for everyday practical use. Instead, it may have been a luxury item, a showpiece of wealth and knowledge, something displayed proudly by the elite. Another theory? Astrology. Ancient Greeks, much like many people today, believed the stars and planets could influence human lives. By setting the device to a specific date, a wealthy individual could cast a horoscope, determining the position of Mercury, Venus, or Saturn at their birth. It's even possible that personal astrological readings were made easier with the turn of a crank. Whether it served scholars, astrologers, or collectors, the Antikythera mechanism wasn't just a machine. It was a status symbol, a glimpse into the heavens, captured in bronze gears, owned only by the most privileged members of ancient society. The Machine's Limits and Ancient Genius For all its brilliance, the Antikythera mechanism wasn't perfect. In fact, by modern standards, it had serious flaws. First, it was built around the ancient Greek belief that Earth was the center of the universe. Their geocentric model imagined the sun, moon, and planets revolving around us in perfect circles. But in reality, planets like Mercury and Mars appear to move backwards at times, a strange phenomenon called retrograde motion. To explain these loops, ancient astronomers invented epicycles, tiny circular orbits within larger ones. The Antikythera mechanism had to mechanically replicate these complex, layered motions with gears. It did so ingeniously, but it couldn't be completely accurate. Every tiny miscalculation in gear size or placement caused small errors that grew larger over time. The mechanism's planetary positions could end up off by as much as an entire zodiac sign. By today's astronomical standards, that's a huge miss. But when you step back and remember what they had to work with, 
no telescopes, no precision tools, no modern mathematics, the achievement becomes nothing short of breathtaking. Crafting dozens of perfectly cut bronze gears, each one meshing precisely with the next, required incredible skill. Designing the mechanism required not just mechanical expertise, but deep astronomical knowledge and mathematical understanding far ahead of its time. The Antikythera mechanism wasn't just an ancient computer. It was a bold declaration of human ambition. Over 2,000 years ago, long before telescopes or modern science, people were already reaching for the stars, using only the tools they could craft by hand. This remarkable device shattered the long-held myth that ancient civilizations were primitive. It revealed a different truth, that the Greeks weren't simply philosophers, poets, and sculptors. They were also engineers, dreamers, and innovators, capable of extraordinary feats of science and craftsmanship. The Antikythera mechanism hints at something even greater, the possibility that countless other inventions and discoveries have been lost to time. Wars, natural disasters, and simple forgetfulness may have erased much of humanity's early ingenuity. If not for a sudden storm that sent a merchant ship to the ocean floor, this incredible device might have been lost forever too. In the end, the Antikythera mechanism stands as a testament to a timeless human spirit, the endless drive to understand the universe around us. Across centuries and civilizations, from bronze gears to digital galaxies, one truth remains. We are a species that looks to the stars and dares to find our place among them.